Hey, hey, time to shine squad. This is Scott Ferguson and I am sitting here with bated breath because I have a friend of mine and also someone that I really look up to. His name is Roger Salam. You guys are going to be blown away about the knowledge nuggets this guy's going to drop, how he, his origin story, all the way to where he's at right now. Someone that I respect a ton, ton, ton. And I'm going to go through his accolades. It's going to give me a minute because I'm blown away by it. And I want everyone here to hear this. Roger is an award-winning inspirational speaker, best-selling author, and global mastermind leader. He facilitates world-class mastermind events all across the globe that accelerate, amplify, and maximize business and life. The National Academy of Best-Selling Authors awarded him Thought Leader of the Year Award. Wow, that's huge. He's also the founder of Equity and Help Utah. Wait till you hear this story. It's a limited liability company, which is a turnkey real estate investing Inc. 500 fastest growing companies with clients in 13 countries. He has delivered over 10,000 professional talks in North and Central America, Middle East, Europe, and Asia. He's originally from Bangladesh and has three lovely daughters. Good luck with that. His mission is to empower entrepreneurs to achieve financial freedom and leave a purpose-driven, fulfilling, and happy life. While wow, there's some serious credentials right there. Roger, welcome to the show. And if you can let us know your favorite color and why? First of all, thank you for having me. My favorite color, my favorite color is the uncolor white. <laughs> that is the first mm -hmm. ever. So tell me. White is a symbol of purity. Look at the brides wear white. Wow. And also my childhood I, my school uniform, I went to a boarding school, my school uniform was white, white shirt, white pants. And the other reason, my mom wanted me to join the Navy. And I asked her why, she said, I look good in white. <laughs> <laughs> so for all those reasons, white. That, that, that's awesome, that's the first, but seriously, purity, from what your mom says, mm -hmm. it, it is. It's a kind of a starting origin place of it's just pureness. That, that's awesome. Roger, your accolades are long, okay? So can you give us an origin story of Roger Salam and how you got from there to here? I, I graduated from UCLA, as you said, I'm originally from Bangladesh. I came here to go to school. And how old were you, Roger? I'm sorry. I was like 18. Okay. And just you know, graduated high school and just came as a freshman to UCLA. I was very fortunate, Scott, my life, I feel like I'm not a very good planner, but my life is guided, my steps are guided from somewhere up above. I just follow my intuition. And this is realization now, not while it was happening, that almost right after college, I met my first mentor, Tony Robbins, and about 89, 90, and I went to see him and I, every, he was the most charismatic speaker that I've ever seen at that point, most prolific. But everything that he was teaching, I said to myself that I want to master what he's teaching. I don't want to dabble in it. And I said, what better way to master than to go work for him? He'll make sure I live it. Otherwise, he's going to fire me. That was my reason for joining. I would have done it for free. And that's why I also ended up being the number one income earner and speaker trainer for him for a you know, by long shot. And that's how I got the best. I used to be on the road 48 weeks out of the year. And that's when you say that I've done over 10,000 professional talks. Not very many people alive can say that. And I that, did that for almost a decade, two to three presentations a day. So the numbers just, and I stopped counting at 10,000. Okay. When I, I literally retired at the ripe old age of 29 and I retired being on the road and in Tampa, people asked me, how did I choose Tampa being everywhere? I said, Tampa was my last city. I just never got on a flight. <laughs> I just went straight as far as I could go to Gulf Boulevard and went to the top floor and I retired. And after two weeks, I was pulling my hair out because all the waves looked the same. <laughs> Wow. And right there, I got a call from UK, the guy who bought the rights in the mid 90s for Tony Robbins. And he said, man, I, I paid a lot of money to Tony. 
I have no idea how to market. So I called the company and said, hey, how do we market it, Tony? And he said, they told me to call you. And will you come out of retirement? I said, thanks for saving me. <laughs> I went there and opened up UK for Tony. And I also trained the trainers. In essence, I got myself out of the job. But when you do things for the right reasons, things open up. So I thought I don't have any more. I don't need to come back next year because he has his team and I prepared them. But on the very last day, he called me in his office and he said, hey, Roger, Tony's not coming back for another whole year. How do we make money in between? I said, beats me. He goes, why don't we market you? You're the one who sold out. You're the one who trained the trainer. And I said, who? See, my self-esteem was not high enough. I didn't see myself as the main guy. I saw myself as the guy who promotes the main guy. But someone else saw that in me. And he said, listen, Roger, the reason I'm sitting here is because I surveyed the companies that you went and spoke. I asked them to rate you, not Tony, on a scale of 1 to 10. The reason I'm sitting here is because they gave you a 12. And that's how I accidentally started my own speaking training. And long story short, I started consulting and I had a consulting client in internet world. And he took me on as a partner and I am Joe Internet. I used to joke that if Al Gore didn't in invent internet, that would be me. <laughs> because... I am one of those people, Scott, I'm an all or nothing guy. I, when I did Tony Robbins, I ate bread 24 seven, I did that. And same thing when I jumped with internet, I jumped with both feet in 1997, long before people knew how to spell email or internet. I was there and I saw that as the future. And we took a company from zero to 2 billion in market cap in a matter of almost 18 months. Wow. And I thought I was set financially for life because I had lots of stock, except I'm loyal to a fall. I was vested, but I didn't cash out. I wanted the stock to go to 100. It was at 50. Unfortunately, you remember the 1999, the internet bubble bursted. Sure. Dot com crash, right? Exactly. I lost everything. I lost everything. I was a dot com millionaire when in one day practically went from dot .com to dot .gone. Dot .gone. <laughs> gotcha. I used to get, when, I, when I do my talk, I joke and said, hey, when the stock market crashed, I slept like a baby. Woke up every hour and cried. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> wow. R Roger, your work ethic obviously is off the charts for you to come over here, 18 years old, USL, UCLA. And then you get, you really bought in to master what TR, Tony Robbins was, was teaching yeah. you. How did your self-esteem not like, like just kind of uh, attract that? Because again, I, I'm a curious person and, mm -hmm. and, and your work ethic was there. You're, you're making inroads, you're growing, but you, you said you had low self-esteem. Tell us about that. No, because I never saw myself as the main guy. Okay. I was like, I saw I'm the guy who promotes the main guy and I would go, I can sell Tony better than Tony Gelson, Tony. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easier to sell someone else. Than yourself. It's always the case. So that I was doing that. And, and that's when someone else recognizes you for your work ethics and they went and surveyed. I never surveyed myself or I never, you know, go and, ask people about me, someone else did it. And then they found another that gave me another level of confidence that I didn't have. I probably shouldn't have say low self-esteem. I should say, I didn't have the level of confidence that I had uh, as a To put speaker. your name behind yeah. it. So like then my name went on the billboard. Sure. Instead of Tony's name on the, on the ad on the, they were doing, promotional things with my photo on it. And I'm like, for the first time, it's like, wow, people are going to come to see me. Right. And, you know, you talk about three daughters, good luck. I right. remember my little, <laughs> people give kids to keep you humble. It's like my little girl, I invited her to the, one of the seminars. Like, 
over 500 people at the seminar. She's there. And the, every time I look at her and she's going, oh, she's oh. Bored. I can't even look at her because I lose my train of thought. She's bored. <laughs> and then at the end, she goes to me, what's wrong with, what's wrong with these people? Right. And because <laughs> they paid you to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome something so, is wrong with these people man and what can i tell you what what do you think roger then makes a good leader i think i know the answer but i want to kind of hear it from you if you don't mind my my philosophy as a leader always has been that lead by example and judge by results okay don't ask anyone to do anything that you haven't done or you're not willing to do and this is so same thing with Tony Robbins or anything I've done. I want to first be a soldier. Another thing is a good leader is a good follower. Wow, that's true. Did you hear that squad? You, you can't really take over the reins until you're really led by somebody that's going to show you the, 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 the direction to go. And, and Roger was humble enough to step back and, and see the vision, but he didn't want to put his name on that shingle quite yet. But it just took that one person to really recognize he is the guy. And that aha moment must have just been fantastic, right? To, to have that happen. I mean, it's scary as all hell, but fantastic, correct? That's, that, that, that's fantastic. So let's take it back even a little bit more. Where's your work ethic come from? I, I went to a boarding school and everything from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, everything was regimented. It's like an you know, army ROTC. And so I went there from grade one. I we had to go march to the dining room and we have so much time to eat and we have everything was so regimented. So that is early on. Wow. had an imprint in my life that it has to be the work ethics there. And I, I so just, that protocol was already set up in you that it just became natural to you. Just be like, if you weren't having that work ethic, you would feel off and, and wrong. Okay. Excellent. So let, let's work our way through it. Tell us a little bit about the winner circle then. Um, the winner circle came when I say that I retired from uh, Tony Robbins and I actually at 29, by the way, yeah, <laughs> and when this, the stock market crashed, I, I didn't know what to do. I was late night. I'm flipping through TV channels just to keep my mind occupied. I'm not even watching all of a sudden late night. There's an infomercial comes on and the snake oil salesman proverbial said, Hey, you can make money in real estate with no money, no credit. I said, I qualify. Carlton, right? Uh, was the name no, Carlton? It was, Carlton it Sheets? Was Russ, it was Russ Whitney. Russ Whitney. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. And huh. I went to this seminar, and it was a free seminar. It's free to get in, but not free to get out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, re I, I went to Russ's uh, seminar. Yeah. yeah, I did. And in Detroit. I remember. $30,000 $30, later that I did not have. Ooh. My philosophy in life, Scott, is I'll trust you unless you give me reasons not to. Right. Maybe it's a, there's a generation gap. I, when I meet people, I don't Google them. It's a new relationship. I don't want what's written about them almost cloud my impression. I want to start new and you can tell me from here. If you've done something wrong, you've paid your debt to society, it's a new start sure. with me. And I just went to the seminar and I said, wow, all these people have on television and in person tell me they have done it with real estate. And the reason it was 30,000 is I knew one thing is I could have bought the same home study course for 3000 exact same thing. The reason I paid 30 is information will never change you. $30,000 came with a mentor. It's mentor that will change you. And that's exactly what did is that money that I did not have. I didn't have the minimum payment. I said, I better make something. Otherwise, I don't have it. It was my last Amex card. I did not have any preset spending limit. And I just, you, you never know what you're capable of doing unless you put yourself on the line. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. 
And then that's when you find out. And, and long story short, in the next five years, I ended up, me and my partner, owning over 500 houses in the Tampa Bay area. But here's another thing that you mentioned about leadership. On the very first day that I went to Russ's seminar, onto the, I bought the boot camp and I met him and he found out that I was Tony Robbins' number one salesperson on the road. He offered me a job to go on the road to sell his seminars. And I had the skill set to do it. And he told me that I would be making half a million to you know, $750,000 if I go on the road. I have never in my life been so tempted to take on a job wow. because I needed that. But I, I say to myself that my power comes from my belief. I don't want to stand on stage and ask people to buy real estate when I haven't bought my first home yet. I could have, and I did it for five years. And then I started my own seminars and Russ Whitney became, you now talk about winner, winner circle. Mm -hmm. I started with another friend of mine, we started the winner circle because we saw that all these gurus are competing. And he came to me and said, why are they competing? Why aren't you the Tony Robbins guy? Because do you want to, let's set up a mastermind and bring all the gurus together oh. and to collaborate. And that's what I did. And Russ came to the winner circle and he comes to my mastermind and see it's now he wrote his latest book. I'm on the back cover giving him endorsement. So it's like Russ a, Whitney's book? Yes. Wow. Russ Whitney's book. I'm giving him endorsement. So it's like a full circle that now we're colleagues and friends sitting at the table and um, really was a humbling experience. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the kudos on that. You're, you're a humble guy, but I'll tell you, that's, that's pretty kick-ass, man. I'll tell you that. That's, that's without a doubt. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you something then, Roger. What, you, you've did a lot of things, but you are always going bigger. What, what is the big, big, big thing you want to accomplish in life? It's, it's almost embarrassingly too big. And I, I couldn't even articulate because I, I thought that maybe people would just judge me that, hey, this guy should be in a straight jacket in a padded room because he's, <laughs> he's so naive. And it's, it's almost my, my bigger dream is to, it's, I'm born with a name like Salam means peace. Wow. And, and my first name, Wajid, and the very first day I came to the U.S. when I went to UCLA, I said, hi, this is Wajid. And they go, hi, Roger. So every time they say Wajid, people hear Roger. I fought it. And so now, it just when I got on the road for so long, I said, hell with it. It doesn't matter who I am. It's what I do. And Wajid means creator. It's almost like creator of peace. So another friend of mine, she's very spiritual. One day sent me a card decade ago said, Mr. Solan, the jig is up. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to bring peace to the planet. I'm like, wow. Wow. I have, I have no idea how I'm going to do that. But I know mastermind is the highest principle for accelerated success. And that's why I started mastermind. And I was speaking in Orlando, and I shared this story for the first time. I said, I have no idea. I can't even create peace in my own home with three girls, let alone <laughs> the whole world. And, but if somebody held a gun to my head right now, that you got to do this, what will I do? I'm going to just call all the Nobel Peace Laureate that won the prize. And I'll put him in a room, a mastermind. And, but I'm like, say, hey, who the hell? <laughs> Why would this Nobel Laureate <laughs> listen to me? Scott? Somebody in the audience was listening. I had no idea. I got off the stage and this lady walks up to me. She's a dear, dear friend of mine now. She goes, oh, you said you want to get all the Nobel laureates together. Um, Klaus Nobel, the, you know, uh, his, uh, the, his uncle was uh, Alfred Nobel. 
Who the Peace Prize and is named after. Peace right? Prize, who founded Nobel. He goes, he's a good friend of my neighbors. I called him. He's waiting on the call for you. I said, what? Right. And I get on the phone and they said, okay, Maria told us all about you and said, hey, we're starting a Peace University. Would you like to join on the board? And, and we'd like to, uh, we're launching this thing. All of a sudden, my fear level went up. I said, oh my God, this oh. is becoming real like that. And I don't know what I said. I said, oh, oh no, I'm busy. And that's the best wow. thing I could come up with. I said, I'm busy. And then <laughs> I was just even more shocked with his answer. They said, well, if you're busy, perhaps we can push the launch to the next year. I said, excuse me? You're going to push it because I am busy. So wow. be careful what you wish for. So sure. I'm, I'm working my way through. I've got, I've got a long way to go. But you asked me the big thing. Here's the sure. big thing. Man. You want to win a peace prize? No, I, I, don't, I don't care about the peace prize at all. Okay. I want to bring peace. And that's um, You want to live up to your namesake. Yes. I want, what you I want to do. Exactly. I want to live up to my namesake. A creator of peace. That's fantastic. So you have did a ton in your time here on this planet. What would you look back if you had a chance to meet, let's say, the 22-year-old Roger? First of write all, a letter to him. Yeah. What would first be included all, in that? First of all, Scott, with, with every sincere bone in my body, I believe I am just getting warmed up. I, I don't feel too. like I am. I haven't achieved anything, and anything. I mean, that it's about what your potential is and what you settle for. That's what the the difference is. And so I feel like I'm still in college as far as my enthusiasm. Like I want to go and do so many things, so okay. many things, so many places I haven't been, so many things I haven't done. I'm an experienced junkie. So I just go, anything that I haven't done, anything I'm, I'm, I'm in. But sure. if I were to write a letter to my own self, I think I would, I would as I said, that I'm, I'm not a very good planner. I just go with my flow. I would, I would probably hire someone. I wouldn't become a, try to be a better planner. I believe that you should follow your strength and then you partner up with people who have those complementary skills, skill sets, instead of trying to, in your, if you knew what your superpower is, your strength, super strength is, sure. don't try to with your weakness, find somebody like operations is not mine. Now I have CEO, now I have um, partners who provide those functions that I'm not good at. That's amazing. So, what give me something with all your experience you you know tony well you know you know these these people russ obviously very well you're sitting at their table now so give me something in life that's blown your mind this one thing tony told when we just like what you're saying we were sitting around in a room tony myself and all of us and and we were just asked tony that Hey man, how do you keep your head not from exploding? That the amount of accolades and amount of praise that you get, and we are in awe of you. And something he said to me, I never forgot. And he said, listen, you know what? First of all, I, I let it not get to me. I let it just flow. But if somebody wants to come give me compliment if I am anything that I'm extraordinary at I'm extraordinary at keeping my commitments if I say I'm going to do something and that year he was giving an example that he said I made a public commitment that I'm going to work out every day I think that was a mistake because he if you've been to his seminars he does you know 20 hour seminars non-stop sure literally you know 12 20 hour seminars non-stop and He's dead and he, how much energy he expends. 
And he goes, I would come back. I can't even open my eyes, but I'll still get out and walk around the block, one block, so that I can keep the commitment. And that is the source of his power. That's the source of his achievement. So that just was, I was blown away with the answer that he gave me. So he says, let it, let the, I guess the compliments kind of flow through, through you, but also huge part that he said is he'll keep a commitment no matter how little he has to do to keep the commitment. Right. Because I've been to, you know, unleash your power. I've been to like six or seven of his. And so, yeah, he does, he brings it. So if he's committing to working out every single day, you know, a walk around the block after everything he's put in is a workout. <laughs> you know? a workout. Just so that he could say that I did work out because he didn't say the quality, quantity and things, but to be able to get put on your, you know, sneakers after they, and they just go around the block. Sure. And when you can't even keep your eyes open, it's just extraordinary. So you can take his words to the bank. Nice. I love that. So what's your definition of a life well lived then, Roger? Definition of what? A life well lived. Life well lived. I was, I was thinking about that. If you, it's like, what, what do you want? What do I want on my epitaph? If it said, he gave more than he took. And I love the Winston Churchill quote that you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. Absolutely. Absolutely. Truly, truly, the Absolutely. secret to living, the secret to living truly is giving. Right. You know, I, I'm a hundred percent a big believer in that. I'm actually a student kind of of Bob Berg's. I've never attended anything, but I, you know, his book, The Go-Giver, if you've ever read it, it is phenomenal. It's my or, number one recommended book now, Bob Berg. I spoke to Bob. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. He, he's my neighbor. Yeah, kind exactly. of like right, right, right around the corner. Um, but it, it's like one, you, he, basically you can't outgive the universe. It's, yeah. imp it's impossible. So, Bye. you know, your, what you bring in is, is, you, you, I'm, I'm just a go giver at heart. My, the, my clients know it. My squad out there knows it, and, and you just can't outgive. And I think that what you just said is, is absolutely spot on for a definition of a life well lived. I mean, it's an open question. Everybody can interpret it any way, but I think what you just gave is amazing. So, okay, so we got like a little lightning round, which I'm sure you, you said you've listened to a couple other podcasts. So, um. I'm going to, you, you and I could talk, you know, 15, 20 minutes on each one of these questions, but I'm going to give you seven to maybe 10 seconds to come okay. back at me. Okay. So here we go. What is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Who you associate with and listen to will determine your destiny. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Absolute persistence. Absolutely. Persistence. That's university. Gotcha. So other than your own website, and of course, Time to Shine Today, uh, recommend us another website to our, our squad and listeners out there that you like to go to just to get fired up, leveled up. This, this particular question, because it, this is very topic related. Sure. It's it can be. Fine. It can, yeah, in, in general, I, I am... Um, I'm very motivated by quotes. So in any um, good reads, reading quotes and reading books, sites nice. are my favorite ones. Beautiful. So let's recommend a book to the, to the listeners. That's also, you and I have read all the classics and stuff that personal development growth. When somebody asks a question like that, it's always the recency <laughs> the law of the right. read. And beyond the classics of Think and Grow Rich and, and Seven Habits, the one that I, I go to, my go-to book right now, when I need a kick in the pants, that I'm like, I'm slacking, 
the one that motivates me more than any book is the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. Grant? Nice. I love it. And, and then you actually mentioned I, the other one that I uh, recommend is the go giver. Sure. I have the go giver. And I also, um, Andy Andrews wrote the traveler's gift that, that, <laughs> That was another one that just blew my mind too. So the other one that I can tell you that recently is uh, Stephen Covey's son wrote the book Stephen M R Covey, The Speed of Trust. Hmm. The Speed of Trust, the one thing that changes everything. Love it. All right, what's your favorite charity or organization that you like to donate to or give your time to? Ch any children's charity. Children are my favorite charities. So nice. I, my, my father built a school in our village and it's like every parent's story that they, never, they went to school barefoot, uphill, in the snow, both, <laughs> both you know? ways. Sure. <laughs> so in our village, there was no school. My father built a school for high school, for primary school. So I go donated. Love it. And so last one, which you've heard this one before, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 70s. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. I love that. I love it. I can just tell you that exactly where you were when <laughs> Eagles, one of these nights. Are <laughs> I, my last podcast, I did an interview with an executive coach, John Fenton. He said the Eagles. He literally, an hour ago, said the Eagles. That's hilarious. And I'm a huge Eagles fan. I mean, I went to... I was small and my father took me to the Eagles and there was smelling this stuff in the air. I was like, what, what is that? But then I also went to hell freezes over tour in 1994, which I think I went to eight of those concerts, which is amazing. But uh, before we, before we wind down, leave our squad out there, Roger, with a knowledge nugget that you don't want them to forget and then take with them. If you will do for the next two years, what most people want to, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life what most people can't do. That's powerful. Get busy, and it's, people. Not, it's not what you get at the end of the two years. It's who you become in the process that's more important. Love that. Okay. And how can we find you, Roger? Um, I think the best way to find is if you want... Uh, you can you want to give people a gift. It's no strings attached. They don't have to give an email. Rogers, VIPgift.com. They can um, get, I just get to still a few things for them. And they can also go to rogersalam.com. And they, they want to just contact me. Excellent. All right, squad. I have been writing, hopefully as much as you two, you people out there have been writing as well. It's just blown away by the knowledge nuggets that Roger has dropped on us from him building his life from the dot com to the dot gone. And his steps are guided from above. So that shows humility. That shows being humble. And if you do things for the right reasons, great things will open up for you. And Roger, we're always talking about staying humble, staying hungry, leveling up our health and leveling up our wealth. And thank you so much. I'm grateful that you are part of our squad now. You're not getting rid of us. No, so no, really, that. really appreciate it. And all the listeners out there in the show notes, there'll be rogersvipgift.com and then rogersalam.com. And we are in all of his information from those books and any masterminds that he has will be in our show notes. So Roger, thank you so much. I'm grateful. And we can't wait to do it again. My pleasure. All right. My Virtual fist pump. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> Have a great day. You too.